Welcome to the Know Before You Go Travel Show, where we share all the latest travel tips, tricks, and insights to make your next vacation the best one yet. So sit back, relax, grab a cocktail, and enjoy the show with Penyak Travel's George Penyak and our senior travel consultant, Janet Penyak. Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. We are back. Cheers, by the way. It's happy hour for us, so we're having a little bit of wine while we do this episode, but it is episode two of our three-part series on Tahiti. Slash French Polynesia. <laughs> Slash French Polynesia, yes. But uh, we're doing this series. It's a three-part series uh, because there was so much to go over with the French Polynesia that we had to cover it in three shows rather yes. than one. So we're on to show number two. We really hope you guys listened to show number one already. If you didn't, that's okay. We're going to jump in. This episode, Janet's going to take us through her time in Morea. Yes, in Morea, which I actually did Morea last bit when I was there. But you should always finish when you're there with Bora Bora. So yeah, if you're going to bounce around, right? Exactly. So save the best for last. I'm doing Bora. We'll do Bora Bora last on the next um, episode. But yeah. today we're going to cover Morea. And I'll actually, and for those that didn't listen to episode one, I didn't go to this trip. Yes. I would Janet, by my myself. wife, <laughs> left me behind Yes, in this disgusting weather we're having here on the East Coast. Yeah, There's no other way bitter to cold, it. and I know it was raining a lot while I was gone. Pretty much every day. Which it actually did rain almost every day when I was there in French Polynesia, because it's the rainy season. But, yeah. it, you know, it's like a, a shower, and then it stops. So Yeah, no, we don't have 80 degrees of showers and stop. It showered, and it showered 24 hours a day. Yeah. In 35 degrees. And do you know how high the suck factor is walking <laughs> your dog in set 7.30 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, in pouring rain. And, and cold. Freezing after you just did it the night before. Yeah. And you're All the while to... I'm like FaceTiming him and it's yeah. sunny and 85 degrees. And what's the deal? We walk our dog. Our dog, Lucky, takes longer to use the bathroom when it's raining. That, yeah. Isn't she that does. perfect? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, that's... Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get her to go quick. You can't talk to her because she doesn't go quicker if you push her. Yeah. Okay. Now off, off okay, on the side we're, <laughs> the we're, sidebar. We're, we're getting. Yeah. We gotta finish up the sidebar here. On. Um, I'm sure our viewers can um, relate. But anyway, yeah. before we kick the show off, you know, I got to give my shout outs. Yes. Go for it. <clears throat> so the last 30 days, uh, no before you go travel show podcast listeners out there, I want to thank you guys. We have had a tremendous audience here. We are um, the United States. Canada, India, Germany, Australia, Austria, Sweden, and the UK. All in the last 30 days. What do you think about that? Pretty awesome. That is incredible and super humbled and excited to have you guys listening to us. We hope we bring you guys some nice entertainment. We hope we make it interesting and um, uh, thank you guys for listening. So without further ado, let's jump right into the show. All right, so we're on to Morea. Yes. And this was... Not the you said this. This was my last stop, but when yeah. you go, you know, I recommend it not be your last stop. Bora Bora should be your last stop. Yeah. Um. So, what, so yeah. Overall, so how did you get there? Let's say you're in, so you were in Tahiti. How did you get over to Morea? Like what's well, the, since I came from Bora Bora, I actually took a flight from Bora Bora to Morea. Um, if you're coming in from Tahiti, you can take a ferry because when you're on the main island of Tahiti, you can actually see Morea in the distance. It's a very big mountainous oh, really? island. Yes. Is it bigger geographically? No, it's about the, I can't remember. I yeah, know. I think it's, I, th- I don't think it's bigger geographically, yeah. but it, um, you can definitely you can see it in the distance. And so you can either take a flight over there or you can take a ferry. I recommend you take the ferry. Um, but I took the ferry whenever I left coming back. Um, Ferry's cheaper, obviously, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. it. Yeah, it's cheaper. And the uh, only thing I recommend is take some Dramamine because <laughs> the water can get a little <laughs> rough. Um, but it's cool. They have a bar on board so you can go and grab a beer. Um, and it's like a 30. They have one ferry that it's 30 minutes. And then there's one that goes a little slower and it's 45 minutes. So That's cool. Yeah. And, and then once you land, is it a long way to, like, how long did it take you to get from the dock, I guess, once the ferry stops? Yes. Yeah, so the first stop that we, uh, our first hotel that we stayed at was the Manaba Beach Resort. Now, if you listen to the previous episode, I stayed at the Manaba Resort in Tahiti also. So yep. this is a sister property. It's just on, you know, the island of Morea. Um, it was very close to the airport and the ferry port. Um, I would say maybe 
10, 15 minutes, not okay. far at all. Um, you always get asked, you know, I feel like people ask, can you hear the planes? Can you see the planes? Oh, right. Yeah. No, you, You're I mean, far, I yeah. don't recall. Yeah. At all. Um, so this is an, it was an interesting resort. It was, I would say probably like a three, three and a half star okay. resort. Yep. Um, so very budget friendly. They do have overwater bungalows there. I happen though to like the garden bungalows better there than the overwater bungalows. Really? Yes. So that, that's very contrary to popular belief. Like right. You would think everybody that goes there wants everyone to bungalow. So what was the difference? What do you like? Why? Um, it was a lot more private and in all of the garden bungalows, they had, um, a private pool and a, Ooh, it, awesome. a high fence, you know, so it fenced off. You kind of had like a, your own little private backyard, um, private pool. Yes. So it's they, like a, it was like a punch well. pool. Oh my gosh. I'm sure they do. Um, but Cause you know what everyone thinks when you walk into a, bu- a private bungalow with a private pool. I mean, yeah. Anyways, not that, not that matters anyways. I mean, it, even if well, you, you if can you, do no, whatever you, you please there. It is completely walled off and private. If you so. skinny dip, it should be no different than wearing your clothes. Well, actually. Oh, you went a step further than me. I'm thinking skinny dipping. Oh, well, I just, just what I thought you were talking about. Oh, okay. All right, moving on. <laughs> yes, moving on. Okay, this is going to be rated R. No, it's not rated R. <laughs> we're fine. Yep. Um, but like I said, I just, I liked those better because it was more private. They were very spacious. Um, the overwater bungalows. You know, they were very nice, but they were right off the beach, so the water wasn't very deep. Apparently, there's very good snorkeling right there off of those bungalows, so is, that, is that would be a plus. Close? I no. guess so, yeah. Um, so it's barely over water bungalows. You know? Right, yeah. Almost it, beach bungalows. Right. Gotcha. And I don't know if it was, you know, the time of day that we were there, um, but the water at that resort just wasn't very like crystal clear blue. And having just, really? in my case, come from Bora Bora, I was kind of like, oh, oh my gosh. Could have um, been the side of the island maybe that that... We'll yeah, look, and it we'll had also just that. rained. So, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know if that had something to do with it. But overall, I mean, the accommodations were very nice, very spacious. Um, How was the food at this property? So I only had breakfast there. And, this um, is the Nava Beach Resort, right? Yes. So I had breakfast. What would you think? It, it was good. It was actually very good. It was one of the only stops that I could actually order my scrambled eggs well done. So that was good because I don't like all the runny eggs. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I, I like I'm that. I'm glad you're just now eating eggs because you used to not even eat eggs. Yeah, I know. Anyway, so also. Well done. <laughs> yes, well done. I don't like them runny. Um, also, we had hung out. Uh, myself and then you know, some of the other agents that I was with um, the night before or that night that we arrived, we um, hung out at the bar there and just had a couple drinks. And it actually, out of all of the hotels that I stayed at, I feel like they had the best nightlife because they had a couple of bartenders. They were playing some good music and um, there was a lot of people in there. So it was, it was really nice. I liked the nightlife at that resort. How was the service? Service was good. Very good. Never had an issue with any service whenever I was there. It was always very good, and the people were friendly. So I really enjoyed it. Um, then after that, so then the next morning, we um, – what? To, oh, or hold on. No, that night that we arrived, we went over to the Intercontinental. Yeah, so that is a, a big brand, right? So it I'm is. sure people are wondering what's that like compared to what their expectations are. So what are your thoughts there? So it's actually the furthest from the airport. Um, okay. Yeah, it's the furthest away. Very beautiful resort. Um, in my personal opinion, I think it could use a little bit of a facelift. That's all right. Like the yeah. rooms were nice and everything, but um, it just looked like, you know, it was it, time. It needed, yes, some renovations. Um, you mentioned the lobby too. Like, and, and see, that's one of the things I feel like properties really should take into consider when renovating is people form their opinion within like the first First few impression, minutes. yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It, if your lobby's a little, I don't want to say rustic, but a little just like dated. Right. Spend the, I would say, spend the money and, and update it because it's like buying a house. When you walk in, you judge it in the first five minutes, whether you're going to have a good time or not. Yeah. They had like kind of darker tile all in the lobby. And so I don't know. I just really? felt like I was walking into like a doctor's office from the nineties or something. Mm. Um, I mean, the property is beautiful. Very, the landscaping was amazing. They have yeah. dolphins there. They have, um, sea turtles there. All in their sanctuary. Like the last, mm-hmm. Oh, that's, yep. cool. Yeah, that's cool. So, I mean, it, it definitely was a beautiful property. I, but, yeah, I think that they could 
you know, put a little bit of money into some renovations there. Didn't you so, say they were planning on that this year? Or yeah, they're, um, th- I know they're redoing the overwater bungalows and it's actually right now it's a good deal. Um, cause I think they're closing them off in January and, um, for people who are going to be at the hotel during that, then they're offering them, um, like a food and beverage credit oh, during really? their stay. <clears throat> yeah. That, so that's nice. That's- that's really nice, too, because there's not many, or if at all, any all-inclusives there, right? So Right, yeah, there's not. That's something nice to take advantage of because unlike when we travel a lot, we love all-inclusives because right. you do get that A lot of them offer yeah. meal plans, but yeah, they're yeah, not, they're true, song, yeah, not true all-inclusives. So. Now, we're wine people. We're drinking wine right now. It's it's uh, it's it's happy hour for us, but anyways. Yes. So you said the wine prices and the drink prices were actually pretty reasonable, right? Yeah, pretty much at all of the, yeah, overall for what you get, you can get a very good French wine um, and it's, you know, pretty cheap. So like uh, whenever we stayed at the Hilton in Marea, which I'll get to that one next, but I was drinking the French Bordeaux for $5 glass. So that's a deal. Yes. Now that is a deal. Um, back to the Intercontinental really quick. They had a very nice buffet that night that we were there eating dinner. Um, they did a Polynesian show. How was, was the, beautiful. okay, I wanted to ask about the entertainment. So yeah. give me your thoughts on that. Yeah. And that one was great. Great entertainment. They also had like an acrobatic show. So they had this woman like from the ceiling and she was like in the sheet. I don't, I don't even know how to explain this, but. Sounds like something you see in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, down. like how. Yeah, it's just kind of the acrobatics, and they climb up the sheets and, like, yep. you know, twirl around and all of that. Um, it's very dangerous, but they know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. <laughs> and, you, I mean, the strength that you have to have to be able to yeah. do that is incredible. Um, so that was really neat. We we got to see that. And like I said, the Polynesian show. Um, so, overall, I do really like that resort. One other thing to note about that, if you are in the overwater bungalows there, which little travel tip that you probably would not know unless you had talked to somebody who had been there. So you know before you go. Yep. What you got. Um, the channel where all of the boats, you know, drive by Maria, it literally goes right like 10 feet in front of the overwater bungalows oh, there. Oh, no. So yeah. they're really not very private. I was about to say, yeah, that's a little too close yeah. for, I agree. you know, public boats coming by. Right. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to go that far. And spend the money I'm going to spend, even if I had to spend a little bit more, I would spend a little bit more to get the privacy. Yes. No, I agree. But so, you wouldn't know that. Nope. You wouldn't. But it, it literally was so close. that You could see inside of the bungalows. Oh, That's yeah. That's how close it was. Yeah. That takes away a lot of the privacy. and Right. You go there to kind of get away from that, right? Isn't yep. that why most people go there just to... You want to get away. This is such a remote you want to get away, right? Yeah, you don't want the boat traffic, right? Interesting. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that was kind of an interesting piece. Um, so, so, so we covered Manaba Beach Resort. Yep. And then the Intercontinental. So then the next day. So this is a pretty big island then to have these, you know. Yeah, I think I, we went and saw four main resorts there. Okay. Um. Now, uh, one other, a couple of other things that I'd like to say about the island. I was so taken aback by how beautiful it was and how green it was. I have never seen an island so green. Really? Yes. And we've seen a lot of islands. That says a lot. Yes. Yeah. So it was absolutely incredible. I and it, you know all of it was very mountainous and just like dramatic cliffs and it, it was wow. really beautiful. Um, it's kind of interesting. There was a lot of chickens on this island, so we saw chickens and roosters. I actually woke up one night because of the chickens. Um, we saw, riding down the street, a uh, hog just, like, walking down the street. Well, that's where the bacon and chicken wings come from, right? I guess so. I told I'm you the just, bacon tasted a little different than I'm American. <laughs> um, they don't do that there. I'm yeah. Sure don't, yeah. Um, but, you know, also one of our guides one day was talking about how just safe the island is. There's yeah. only 10 police officers on the island of Marea. Um, that's got to be a nice gig. Oh, yeah. But it I just, mean, it was a yeah. beautiful place. Very different than Bora Bora. So I think it's a good you know, What's island to combine yeah. uh, the water. The water's okay. Water's and Bora Bora, like all you know, a lot of the resorts are on their own little private islands, and so all of that's flat. And then facing back towards the main island, which is a big mountain. Um, 
And the water, yeah, the water in Bora Bora is just amazing. Um, so the resorts, the resorts here in Morea, you said were all on a private island. Or no, Bora that's Bora Bora. Bora. Oh, yes. that's pretty cool. Like yeah, all the resorts are on their own island. Yes, we're getting into Bora Bora next. Don't want to confuse. I'm not trying to steal, <laughs> trying to steal your thunder for the the last finale, the big one, the big three part series yes. finale. But show. no, Morea, yeah, it, none of the resorts are on you it's know one a private. Island. It's yeah. one big island. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, if you want a place with a lot of land activities, this is a great spot for that. You know, you can do some hiking, you can do ATV ridings, you know, all sorts of like safaris. It's a really um, nice place to kind of start out and get a lot of activities and yeah. before you go, say, jump over to Bora Bora and just relax. Um, what do you think of the? Uh, so you mentioned like getting out and leaving the property things to do is mm-hmm. it, outside of the activities and on an island like Morea, are there things to do if you were to leave the resort and go check out some of the cities there? Is it remote or, you know, um, the way you I describe would, it, it sounds like it's like a little remote where there might yeah, not it's a be little much remote, to do. But and there's a lot of activities, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's like a, big city that you'd go into i mean we didn't when we were there there are some cool local spots that you can go to and do some shopping and you know eat at restaurants um so that's pretty cool now the second day that we were there after we checked out of the manava resort we went and did an excursion and it was um called the moana lagoon and motu picnic excursion so i was kind of like you know with the hilton property did this no no no. this was not this, oh, this didn't have anything to do group. Okay. yeah it was just part of the group that they had set up for us can someone book this though yes okay yep absolutely um so i didn't really know what to expect with that except we're just going to a private island and gonna have a picnic hey boo boo <laughs> so, picnic a basket um so we they take us to this <laughs> um like boat landing place and we wait and we all board um the boat and they have two of them there and they actually have one that's just full of tourists and you know, j- people just like us who are getting on the boat and they're going to go do kind of what we're doing uh and then they have a second boat that had a bunch of locals cuz apparently on Sundays all of the locals go out and like do yeah. this sort of thing and so they put us on the boat with all the locals, which I thought was pretty That's cool. That's pretty awesome, yeah. Yeah. Um, on the other one, like, you know, they didn't have beer or anything like that because they didn't serve beer. But on this yeah. one, all the locals had brought their beer. And they were, like, sharing it with people. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, so it, it was really there? cool. Do you remember? Um, they even Hena- have a local beer? Hinano. Hinano. Yeah, you can get it, like, a lager or, um, I think, amber. I'm not a beer person, but yeah. I did. I drank the regular lager, and it was good. So, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we went out and did that. They parked us. They were, I guess, anchored the boat in um, this area, and there was lots of other people around. And well, I'll end up posting a video of it. But they were Whoa, like, is okay. This, is this where the guy did the coconut thing? No, no, no. Oh, this is before yeah. that. Okay. This is when we swam with sharks. Oh, wow. I was yeah. really worried about you telling me this because yeah. I did not. I worry about you when you travel as it is and to tell me you're out there swimming with sharks. That doesn't <laughs> make me feel any better. I was going to say, that's not going to make anybody yeah. feel comfortable. I literally thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if something happened if travel insurance would cover me because I'm putting myself. You were putting yourself out there. But they're, they were the smaller sharks, Yeah, right? they're, well, no, they were not small. Um, they were, so the black tip sharks, but apparently they're harmless. And... I mean, there were probably 10 or 15 of them just all right there. And all these people, we jump in. They're all swimming around. Then there's all these stingrays swimming around us. See, I'd be more concerned about the stingrays. Even though we've done that before, we've swam with stingrays in... Uh, in Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman. That was a fun excursion. Yeah. Highly recommend that. Yeah. Um, And, you know, they didn't have as many stingrays there as they did at the Stingray City in Grand Cayman. But um, it was really cool. And, you know, some of, like, the guides that we were with, they would pick the stingrays up just like they they did in Grand Cayman. They get so accustomed to human. Right. You know, it's kind of – it was like that in Grand Cayman, which was really cool. Now, is that – so that that is an excursion that – is that part of the picnic? Or I, I'm trying to follow Yes, it you. is. Yes, okay. it is. Yep. So it's a picnic this is, slash swim with sharks. Right, exactly. <laughs> like I never, I did not know that this was a part of it. But yes, it is swimming with sharks and rays. 
plus the private picnic. Mm. So um, we swam with the sharks and rays for probably like 30, 45 minutes. Um, oh, real quick. Also, they said, so they feed all the stingrays. Yeah. And apparently most of the companies no longer feed the sharks because um, one of the sharks did bite someone one time. Oh, well, yeah, they get, yeah. So, because I guess they, just how they had their hand out with the food, like it wasn't intentionally like doing it. Yeah, yeah it just got to after that. Yeah. So, but when I was there, I did see one of the guys feeding the sharks. Well, I so. mean, it, at your own risk, right? I yes. Mean, at that but point. I will tell you, it was, it was very different, you know, because all you hear about your whole life, you know, oh yeah, don't sharks are scary, don't get in the water with sharks, blah blah blah. Um, but they're smaller, right? They were like three foot sharks. They were probably like four feet long. Really? Yeah. Um. And seeing them just swimming all around you, I was like, what in the heck am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I don't get in the water, like, on the off the coast of the Carolinas here. I'm not doing it. Right. It's too dark. You can't see Oh, anything. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that so, like, I definitely would not do. But I mean, this, the water is crystal clear. You can see and it. And it's so. fine. People do it. I just have a comfort level of uncomfortableness when, like, I get in that water and I can't see my feet. Like, oh, that right. really, you know, yeah, I grew up in southern Florida where you can see your feet and stuff. The water's pretty clear. Yeah, when I got up here. I'm like, whoa, whoa. If no, I can't you, see and, where, and those, it's a I think the sharks that we have here, they're it's not like the friendly, you know, black tip sharks that aren't really going to hurt you. So. No, these guys are hungry over here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. These sharks are coming to eat. Yeah, you see it every year. More and more shark attacks happening. Oh, at I least know. The media is covering it more. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. I'm not getting in that water. I'm, nope. I'm more of a I'm more of a, a pool bar person. Where right. I can stare at the pretty water. Yes. And just have a drink at a tiki bar or a pool bar. No, that's what I bar. enjoy, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, no, this was very cool. You know, it, it was just a completely different experience. Um, so then after we were there for, like, 30, 45 minutes, then they took us over to this private island, um, which they called it there. It's called Motu. And it was absolutely beautiful there. When you were there, you just felt like you were – a world away from everything and um was that where the the coconut person was yes yeah so you showed me this video this guy gnawing this that was our ripping. tour guide that was your tour guide yeah we might have to post the video he is ripping this coconut to shreds with his teeth with his teeth the shell like the outer the, the fuzziness layer that you have to peel off right Ch- just chomping he was teaching that down. us yeah about coconuts and how to eat them and I guess peel them and all that. I mean, he was an absolute savage on that coconut. Oh, yeah. He, He's been he, doing this for years and is a beast. I think he said he was only like 23 years old. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. he. But, yeah, he's been doing it for a little while. We'll have to post that because it's actually pretty funny. It's a very interesting video. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll share that on our Facebook. And I think it's too long for Instagram. I think they've got the Yeah, minute, yeah, it max, is. But um, that guy was going just ham on the on the coconut yeah, with his teeth. Right. No, I'm more just was. peel with your hands. This guy... He had started that, but then he, I guess he just wanted to show off and oh, he's just a beast. become Absolute. a savage. Yeah. So. I would rip my own teeth out probably. Um, so on this little island, they had like a grill set up and um, they made us food like chicken and um, they grilled some fish and then they had like a couple of different sides. And it was really cool because we were with the locals. Some of them had like their musical instruments. I'm not exactly sure what they were. And they sat there and like played music. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's and it was nice. all, you know, like the local Polynesian music. And it just, that was a great experience. It was so peaceful yeah. there. Um, yeah. So I highly recommend that excursion. And we stayed on that island. I think we were scheduled to stay for like three hours. Um, yeah. But then we ended up going back a little early because we had to get to the next hotel. So Seeing stuff like that, like the live music and the, just how peaceful it is, that's why you go. You yeah, and I mean? we were it's just like, like, it was almost like, you know, families here who go to like the park and just kind of have a cookout and yep. hang out. Like we felt like we were just hanging out, you know, with like a couple of different families and they're that's having cool. their cookout and yeah, it was very neat. And that's, I mean, I would recommend if, if you, right, I think you would too, if, if someone does make the trip out there to go look at an excursion like that. Oh, like, absolutely. Like give that a try. If you don't have to get in the water, if you don't want to get in the water with the sharks, but right. if you can go experience like a private almost like cookout type family setting yes. with a few locals. That's really cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I highly recommend it. And, um, some of the other people that we were with, they also did a uh, jet ski tour, but as you know, jet, I'm not a jet ski fan. I know. I love, I love them, but you yeah, like no, them. thank you. Um, so they did that and they really enjoyed that. 
Um, so after the picnic excursion, then we went and checked in over to the Hilton Marea. And that was my favorite resort that we saw of the four that I saw there. Yep. Um, just beautiful property. They also had really good American food. And after. <laughs> yeah, because you said most of the properties are very seafood heavy. I think that's very a very important heavy. thing to talk about. Yes. And so like, like on your average menu i mean what percentage of seafood would you say i mean a pretty 95 percent. that's a lot <laughs> yeah I mean, that's something to be prepared for when you're going out there and you don't eat seafood no you don't so, eat much seafood i mean well we already got into the one thing that i eat calamari yeah. um you would like it if you just ate more of it well you eat anyways shrimp. You had shrimp before. i don't eat it though but you've had it and you said it yeah i've had bad. it it lobster, wasn't bad you gotta like lobster no i'm good Okay. So this weekend, but, this weekend you're trying lobster. Oh my gosh! You're gonna, no, you've had it before. I know you have. You're gonna. Try I know it again. I have. No, I'm good. Um, no, so gonna, they okay. had at the Hilton Marea cheeseburger, like all different kinds of burgers, and they had pizza. And after a week of um, just no, pure seafood, yeah, yeah. Of pure seafood. So really, I didn't eat too terribly much i was like hallelujah praise jesus i can have a cheese pizza so i got a cheese pizza and it was really good so that's good um, to know so the hilton property there has a more diverse menu they do whereas yes. some of the other properties you're it's gonna not. find a more local menu with right. seafood because that's what the locals eat there probably is yes and they're surrounded by beautiful waters with a lot of marine life they're gonna be heavy right. seafood so if you want more of that balanced experience of home I really like and, the Hilton, yeah. Yeah, the Hilton's a good place to go, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. So um, how, how did the Hilton compare to other properties as far as, like, how nice it was, service? What did you think about that? I mean, I think, you know, all, all across the board, the service was great at all of the resorts yeah. that I went to. Um, you know, as far as, like, luxuriousness goes, I mean, I think it was probably the best. Hilton, um, yeah. Yeah, just the facilities were, you know, just a little more up-to-date. Um, I mean, not that you can't go wrong, I don't think, with any of the ones that I saw. Um, I That one was just a little more my style, and the overwater bungalows were beautiful. Outside I didn't of have the, uh, the overwater oh. bungalow. I had a, another, like, uh, kind of garden bungalow with the pool. So. Oh, yeah, so... So if you're looking, even though it did have more of an Americanized menu and more food, which I expect probably like most Hiltons and major right. major brands would, did it still have an authentic feel? Oh, absolutely. To it? Yes. I, so I think that's important to, to know. They just that. had a good mix of both. Yeah. yeah. So Is that's that something that we would like because we like to enjoy really good food while we travel. Yeah. And I, I think love so. the seafood. Like I'd be in heaven, but like oh, yeah. you, I would feel bad for you if you can't eat it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, they, they had a great mix of both. And you could have whatever kind of Polynesian dish you wanted. And then if, you Crush know, burger, especially if you're traveling with kids, yeah. you know, who are going to be a little more picky, which I guess that's my diet is that of a kid. But, um, yeah, they, you know, they've got the burgers and the pizza. So I, I really like that property. Um, another cool thing is they have this bar, I think it's called, crepery i'd have to look again but um it's out by the overwater bungalows and it's an overwater bar and that's that's where that video that and pictures that i sent you of all the sharks swimming oh yeah they they just swim right up they swim right up at night they usually start to come in they said around 7 30 and they're just swimming all around do they serve food at that bar because probably they serve like crepes and stuff okay so there's people are chunking yeah, that Some might be why they're there. there. Yeah, they, they they know. Yeah, um, so which, that which was me, really I like cool. To feed the animals. I'm one of those guys that'll. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I feel bad for you, little guy, and I'll feed you something. <laughs> yeah, and they were the black tip sharks again. At least I think most of them were. Yeah. Um, but they still they advise that you don't get in the water with them there. No, um, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, but that that was very cool because I mean I just sat there for an hour just watching all of them just swim around it was really neat so one thing i found interesting that i think you should talk about a little bit is is we both thought that maybe not we didn't have this assumption about it but we figured that it was more of a couple's destination not so much family friendly but you came back and said no no i think it actually is a little more family friendly and it is like you can actually bring your family to bora bora Hubby wife. Well, we're not really... talking about Bora Bora right oh, now. I'm sorry. Yeah, I keep I keep calling it Bora Bora because I'm excited about Bora Bora, which <laughs> is the next episode. Uh, but just the the French Polynesian and Tahiti in general, you can bring your family there and still have a like. It's very family friendly. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I did not think that um, 
it was a family destination, but after going, I definitely think that there are all of the hotels or the majority of them have, you know, kids clubs and great That's programs. Cool. Um, so you can drop the kid off and, you know, have them do that. And, um, they also have babysitting services and there's lots to do with your family there. So I think it is a great family destination. What about, um, how the, the size of the overwater bungalows? Cause a lot of people are going to ask, you know, and, and I'm not trying to touch on more board too much, but just in general, like, could you have a family of four stay in an overwater bungalow? Or is um, the overwater bungalow is pretty much just one bedroom only? Yeah, for the most part, the maximum occupancy is two in them. So if you bring your family, don't expect maybe to stay in an overwater bungalow, right? Right. And actually, when we were at the, which is the last hotel I'll talk about in Morea, the Sofitel, they don't allow children under 12 in their overwater bungalows, whereas really? none of the other properties were like that. But they said for safety reasons... They do not allow children under 12 in their overwater bungalows. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, but they could accommodate up to three people in theirs, but it would have to be like a 12 or 13 year old, you know, that you take with you. So you're talking about like three people, like a king bed and then an extra bed somewhere? And then there's a sofa bed. Sofa bed. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, Would you say it was? What was the resort called? Sophie Tail? Yeah, it's called Sophie Tail. That's a common brand, right? Yes, it is. Okay, it's a big brand here. Yeah. yeah. So that was the last property that we toured. Um, and they had a beautiful beach, great you know restaurants, and beautiful spa. Um, they had the spa right there on the ocean and um, a lot of overwater bungalows. It, it yeah. was a beautiful property. And we ate lunch there. And it was very cool. We actually got to meet the chef. Like they took us back in. Love the, that. Yeah, yeah, in the kitchen. So we kind of could see how that works. None of the other resorts I toured when... I was there, did that, so that was very neat. But we met him, and he was great. He catered to, you know, all of us who had, like, there were two people that had allergies in our group. and Dietary then, restrictions, yeah. Yes, and then when he found out that I didn't eat seafood, then he made me a chicken dish. So um, it was really That's good. That's a cool place. So, okay, so yeah. let's do this real quick. Let's do... Um, let's do Morea Superlatives. Are you pretty much at the end of the... Yes, I mean, I guess. All right. So, yeah. out of the resorts you stayed at, you stayed at the Minava Beach, Res- Beach Resort, Intercontinental, Hilton Hilton Property, and then what was the last one? Sophie Tell. So, I Sophie only Tell. stayed at the Minava and well, the overnight, but you Hilton visited. overnight, but I visited all four of those. Yes. All right. Best view. The best view. Um, this is Morea Superlatives. We're giving them out. I mean, they all have great views. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they really... No, I can't pick one because they all have great views. Best spot for couples? Best spot for couples, I would say the Hilton. Hilton, okay. Best spot for families? Um, It's okay if it's Hilton, too. I was going to say, I would probably go with either the Hilton or the Intercontinental. Probably the Intercontinental, actually, because they have a little bit more for kids because they have all the dolphins there and they have the sea turtles there. So it's I, kid play. I, like I that, think that, yeah. yeah, that's a little more kid friendly. So okay. yeah, then the intercontinental. Okay. Best location on the Island. Um, I really like the location again of the Hilton. Um, it's taking home some superlatives. It here. is. Um, at the Sophie tell that was a great location too. Um, it was to the east of the airport where as in the ferry, um, the other three were to the West okay. and the intercontinental was the furthest away. And then I would say the Hilton was probably maybe like 20, 25 minutes away. Um, okay. and then the Manava was very close, like 10, 15 minutes. So, um, not to interrupt your superlatives, but real no. quick, one fun fact about Maria is if you're a golfer, there's only two golf courses in French Polynesia. Maria has one of them. That so. is huge. Yes. Huge for people. And they say there. it's the best one of the two. So. Really? <laughs> yes. So best golf course. What, yes. Which resort would you stay at if you're going to golf? Do you, do they say? Um, I mean, you, you could stay. The Intercontinental would be the furthest away. Furthest away. Okay. Yeah. But they all will take you there if you want to go. They'll take you there. And I mean, they up. could arrange a taxi for there you. you yes. Okay. Yep. That is cool. Something to look into because I'm yes. a big golfer. That's peak, you should peak my ears. Yes, that's right. All right. So I think I know what you're going to say. This best food. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, Hilton. the Hilton. Okay. Hilton. okay. Yeah. Best room accommodations. I know you probably saw all the rooms. Best room accommodations. Uh, Well, it all depends on what you're looking for. That's very true. Yeah. What if you're looking for an overwater bungalow, which is what everyone's looking for when you Yeah. Go? Then I would say either the Sofitel or the Hilton. Wow. So the Hilton is just 
racking it I up. I told you it's my favorite. Okay, well, hey. <laughs> it's we, my favorite there. We're not lying here. We just yeah. it is what it is. So. Right. But the Sofitel, they had great overwater bungalows too. Super cool. Yeah. Okay. So overall, if you're going to go, Morea is a very nice place. Oh, beautiful. What, what, what makes it different? Just the amount of activities? And yeah, the how... amount of activities. Um, and it's kind of hard to s- describe it, but the landscaping, landscape there is just very dramatic. Like the mountains, you know, it's just very steep cliffs. It's like yeah. no place I've ever seen. It's not as remote as Tiki Hau. Right? No, yeah, no, Tiki House, like well, you're describing that. That's like super remote. Yeah, no there's like cell I said, you, you're a 30 minute ride from the main island. Good Wi Fi too, right? You probably have more. Uh, yeah, you said that when I talked to you, that was the best Wi Fi I'd had the whole trip. That's true. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. I can actually see you on Facetime. It was really nice. Right. Yeah. yeah. Before so, it was like it. Uh, eat, uh, that's eat, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so no, I think it's a great place to start out your trip and then you know switch over to. You know, if you're going to only do two islands, then switch over and do Bora Bora after that. But um, beautiful place. And like I said, the greenest place I've ever been. At first, I thought it reminded me of St. Lucia. Yep. But just the cliffs are just way more dramatic. And yep. um, it is just the greenest place I've ever seen. Everywhere you look yeah. is just green. I love it. Yeah. Volcanic Island? Was it a volcano? Is that one? Uh, yes. There, there you go. Yes. Yeah. So. So, so rich with blah. <laughs> rich with minerals that kind of i guess i'm not a scientist but, uh, <laughs> i'm not either whatever <laughs> um anyways all right well let's wrap it up here it's been 35 minutes anyone that's listened this whole time we love you guys thank you so much for listening um give us a like and a, a review here um any teaser before we wrap up that you want to give for bora bora because the, the the third show here of our three leg series is bora bora all like about bora bora um i will say one thing what real quick about Bora Bora yeah. is, you know, you always, you see a lot about it online and all the pictures and you've always heard about it, you know, as being like the most amazing place and it's always on people's bucket list. And I will tell you it, the beauty of it, it is absolutely 1000% worth every penny that it takes to get wow. there and all the time that it takes to get there. That is the most beautiful place I've ever been. It lives up to the hype. It lives up to the hype. So yeah. So tune in next time and I will tell you all about what I did there and the different resorts that I visited. And I did get to stay in an overwater bungalow. So I will share that as well. Wait to talk about that. When we go back, we're going there, right? Yes. We are taking me next year. That's right. It's not an option. I have to go. (laughs) Yeah, we're going. (laughs) <laughs> so let's call this show here. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. So um, we're going to go and pump this episode out now. It's Tuesday night. We're going to get it cranked out. I'll get it edited and ready to roll. And then when can we expect the show on Bora Bora? You think we can, let's knock it out this week. Yeah, we'll try let's to get it in the next couple Christmas. days. Yeah, before Christmas. So. so while you're bundled up cold anywhere in the United States, if you're in the... You can dream about the warm, beautiful we'll Bora Bora. About, and yeah. if, you know, if you get some Christmas money... Then you can kind of decide bore, to bore put <laughs> to put that away for your bore bore fun. That's right. That so. is awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening. We're gonna call the show. We love you guys, Janet. Excellent information as always. The travel expert. I'm just the host that sits behind the mic and does a lot of jabber john. So there you go. Anyways, we'll see you next time. Thank Thanks, you guys everyone. So much.